Welcome to Saturday Morning Meeting for Suppliers, presented by 8th and Walton, the premier destination for supplier development, and sponsored in part by Dun & Bradstreet Credibility Corp., the leading provider of credit and credibility solutions for businesses. We have three segments for you today, all focused on helping suppliers become better partners to Walmart and Sam's Club. Our first feature is with Lisa Bond of RSI. Lisa discusses digital marketing programs and how to target them to the right people. But first, our headlines. We've been hearing a lot about Walmart's plans for Canada, particularly in the wake of Target's departure from the country. On February 11th, Walmart Canada issued a press release detailing its expansion plans. Walmart plans to invest over 268 million U.S. dollars in Canadian stores, distribution centers, and e-commerce. Walmart Canada will build 29 super centers during the 2015 fiscal year, greatly contributing to employment opportunities for Canadians. The super center project alone will generate 3,700 construction jobs, 1,000 store jobs, and 300 distribution center jobs. More exciting news on the international front. Fruitnet.com reports that Walmart China has appointed Maggie Sands to the role of Senior Vice President and Chief Corporate Affairs Officer. Sands has been with Walmart since 2004, most recently as Vice President of International Corporate Affairs. The decision to promote Sands to her new position follows recent scrutiny over Walmart China's compliance practices. Supermarket News reports on another executive appointment. As does Chief Operating Officer, Mark Abotson is headed stateside to serve as Special Vice President of Innovations for Walmart U.S. Abotson will report to Walmart Chief Operating Officer, Judith McKenna, and will assume responsibility for improving Walmart business and store operations through the development of new processes. The article reports that Abotson is scheduled to arrive in the United States within the next few weeks. Last week, we reported on the efforts by the New York Attorney General to crack down on retailers that sell mislabeled herbal supplements. Several retailers, including Walmart and GNC, were ordered by the Attorney General to stop selling supplements that allegedly did not contain the herbs listed on their labels. According to CBSNews.com, however, some supplement industry groups are responding to these charges, arguing that DNA testing alone shouldn't be used as a measurement of the supplement's efficacy. The supplement industry argues that DNA testing may not be adequate for determining the quality of a highly processed herb. It also doesn't address issues of contaminants that may affect the safety of the supplement. Walmart continues to expand its grocery delivery testing. AZCentral.com reports that three Walmart stores in Chandler and Mesa, Arizona, will offer a fresh grocery pickup service. Customers can order groceries online and select a pickup window. The customer then drives to the store where a Walmart associate will load the groceries into the customer's car. There's no fee for the service, but there is a $30 minimum purchase requirement. Walmart has been testing grocery pickup and delivery services since 2011. After these brief messages, Stephanie McCraddock of Acorn tells us all about influencer marketing. And then, in Heart of Business, we'll meet Steve Wolf of Abbott Nutrition and learn about how his team has benefited from kissing a pig. Stay tuned. K-Stack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs. We offer the supply chain expertise needed to navigate the challenges of selling products with the world's largest retailers. And we provide customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, K-Stack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. K-Stack, retail logistics is what we do. I think our, our MBA is different in several aspects from the traditional online MBA programs. We're teaching a methodology that has proven to win. In our school, learn something on Monday and on Tuesday morning, put it in practice. It's real stuff with real action to accelerate careers. Bentonville Plaza, across the street from the Walmart home office. The best office location offers proximity and services like no other business complex in the area. Call 479-659-1260 today. This week on Retail Edge, we've got Stephanie McCraddick, founder of Acorn Influence. 
It's one of the leading influence marketing companies in the country, developed right here in Northwest Arkansas. Stephanie, welcome. Thank Glad you you're for here. having me. Tell me a little bit about your background and this whole area of influence marketing. Sure, it's a new space. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't even know what the term means. Uh, my background is this interesting mix of advertising and human resources, which comes together really nicely for this space. Uh, my professional background is that I worked in the advertising industry and then I was a blogger. Mm -hmm. I still have my tech blog for women. And then I went to work for Acumen, which a lot of people here locally are familiar sure. with. Um, and worked with lots of influencers around the country to deploy the message of Country Outfitter Boots. Took that experience and started Acorn, an influence company. How long have you been at it? At so at Acorn, we've existed for about a year yeah. now, and it's been a big year. It's a grand, a grand experiment, but it seems to be yes. working out, right? Yes. Um, I learned a lot from my acumen experience about how to uh, easily pivot and, sure. and iterate, and this, this whole digital marketing space is new. And right. so... We're constantly learning and changing. So, so how can Walmart suppliers really take advantage of this influencer marketing? Why is it important to them? So influencer marketing is different than social media marketing and content marketing in that in those spaces, really, you're deploying your own message on your own branded properties. Right. Influencer marketing is deploying those people who are influential, relevant, and credible to deploy your message for you. So kind of like your wingmen right, right. or wing women in the digital sure, space, sure. you know, really out there telling your story across platforms. Um, so we're platform agnostic. Some of the people we work with are bloggers. Right. Some are not, some are Instagram stars. Sure. Um, whatever is right for the campaign. What differentiates between a blogger and an influencer? Well, most bloggers are present on lots of social media channels. Mm -hmm. Um, not all of them are influential, though. Right. There are 31 million blogs in the U.S. alone. Sure. There are only 16 million newspaper subscribers. So there's twice as many people currently producing digital content than there are consuming traditional print media in wow. the newspaper form. It, that's fascinating to me. Wow. And um, so a blogger is not necessarily influential, but they may have a following, usually those who have been at it for a while or who have a particular voice or who've um, launched for some purpose um, and have a specific niche. And so it's your job to try to qualify whether right. or not a blogger is influential and therefore can be an influencer. Right, but then there are also influencers who are not bloggers. Got it. So just like I said a second ago, somebody may be very influential on Instagram mm -hmm. or Twitter or Pinterest or um, Vine or Snapchat, and they may not have a blog. And as a blogger, to me, I think... That's fantastic because a blog is a lot of work. <laughs> like, good right. for you for right. just doing that. Sure. Um, it's an interesting space. So how does so if you're you're a CPG supplier and you're trying to figure out how to fit this into an overall mix of things that you want to do to drive customers mm -hmm. to your brand, how does it fit? Well, one of the ways that we kind of help people find the money to try something like mm -hmm. this, because really this is a lot of people haven't put their toes in the water yet. Sure. And they need that extra hand going, okay, it's okay to put some dollars towards this. Um, is that, you know, 27% of traditional advertising budgets to this day are still going to print advertising. But it's only 3.5% of media consumption. Right. So if you just for one quarter take part of that budget and put it at something like this, like find a blogger or work with an agency mm -hmm. like Acorn, and try a campaign. If it doesn't work for you, then put it back in print or put it in pay-per-click advertising or you know search engine marketing or something else. Sure. Currently, you just need to be pivoting a lot. So Stephanie, what are some good examples of how uh, suppliers have used influencer marketing for great effect? So we have a couple different ways that um, have been really interesting this last year. Uh, one of the first campaigns we did was for a major CPG. It was a one-month campaign um, at Walmart for a social good cause. Mm -hmm. And we knew it was a visual campaign mm -hmm. that the images were going to be what really compelled people to take action. So right. we had to identify the relevant influencers. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a blog campaign. It was strictly an Instagram campaign with a little bit of Twitter amplification. Um, because we needed to have big impact really fast sure. in that one month period. And so we deployed about 70 influencers, Instagram influencers, mm -hmm. to really tell this visual story. And their 
following because we picked the right influencers who were relevant and credible to the campaign. Um, their stories amplified that message, got um, millions of impressions in one month, only using 70 influencers. Wow. So it was a very affordable campaign. Sure. Um, and then helped that CPG sell out their mod at Walmart um, at 100%, wow. which was unexpected. Wow, that's fantastic. So it was very exciting. And then the other example is we have a lot of CPGs now that are choosing to do year-long ambassador-type mm -hmm. campaigns because sure. of the economics of it. It's just easier to deploy a group of people for say four quarterly rollouts or four promotional rollouts throughout the year and then add on to those people um, seasonally with extra influencers. So, and some of them are blogs, some of them are not. Stephanie, Whatever that's, works. That's great. Thank you for sharing those insights. This, this is obviously a really interesting and growing area. It looks like very bright future for Acorn Influence. Thanks for coming on, really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. The rest of Saturday morning meeting will be coming right up. Retail Solutions is the market leader helping advance reporting and analytics with Walmart suppliers around the globe. We manage the data for you, automate data integration, attribution, and reports, and then help you focus on activities that will drive the most value. To do this, RSI works with you to perform a business value assessment to identify the largest value opportunities in your business. If improving results in sales through better insights and execution and efficiencies are important to you, contact RSI today. We all have large libraries of data. Unfortunately, most companies never read what is in their library, but instead settle for top-line reporting. Beyond software that just automates, when we open our minds to being curious and creative with data, we discover the insights that build into remarkable ideas, ideas which deliver business growth. Here at the Harvest Group, we do just that. Open up your rich consumption data into a set of priceless ideas that grow the business. Are you ready to unlock the ideas buried in your data? Let the Harvest Group take a look at your business. My colleagues and I were lucky enough to have a custom course put together for us by Ethan Walton, an IRS, our instructor. It focused on all the different aspects of what an analyst might need from retailing to work with Walmart. I think what surprised me most is that there were so many things that I had not been using in Retail Link that would be valuable for me and that I hadn't attempted to use yet. Um, and also just some tips and shortcuts. Iris had a lot, has a lot of experience and she knows how to help you find things that are going to help you do your work. Listen up suppliers, you can now measure your digital marketing program. With me today is Lisa Bond from Retail Solutions to tell you how. Welcome Lisa. Thank you. So with Walmart focusing on omni-channel, how can Walmart suppliers increase customer engagement? With the power of connecting POS and inventory data to the consumer, we're now in a new era of being actually able to optimize promotions and measure them using real-time or near real-time store data to do okay. that with. So when you say optimize a promotion, give me an example. What does that mean? Okay, so this is where it gets really fun. Okay. So basically here, let's pretend that I'm a supplier and I have a new product introduction that I'm, I'm launching. And so I want to be able to support whatever promotions I have out there for that new item launch, but I also want to drive that customer into the store near them, a customer that's likely to buy that product. Okay. And so using the sales and inventory data connected to our, our partner, like a max point, uh, enables us to go out and target the consumer within, let's say, a two-mile radius of a Walmart where that product actually just started scanning. So, so, so the idea behind it is don't waste time at a store that doesn't have product yet. Don't start your advertising campaign, right. get things going, and then there's no product there. That's right. Okay. That's right. So make sure the product's scanning and has inventory and then target those customers who are likely to buy it right near that store. Even tell them this store at this address right nearby, this Walmart, has that product you're looking for. That new flavor, oh. that new scent. And it can be a message that the supplier chooses, right? They're going to work with their ad agency and refine or, or create this promotion. But it really allows you to get in and support existing promotions, not just new item launches, right. or even run down excess inventory that you've got in store so you might wrap a promotion or a price event around that and get out there and communicate with those customers that are likely to come so by. So one it. of the things that, that I heard you say was you can be specific to a store. You can say it's available at this Walmart on Pleasant Grove Road. Yes. Has that ever been done? I don't think so. It it, I, we're the, the first measurable there, right? digital campaign that we're aware of that allows you to target like that with your real-time data and then measure the results and oh by the way let's say we start up 
And yeah. this one store is just selling the heck out of a product and it's selling down really fast. You might want to dial up and optimize that, that campaign to hit more people around those stores that are, are really causing it to fly off the shelves. So you can optimize that, from that campaign okay. as you okay. go along and maybe take the focus off certain stores where it's not yielding results or put the focus on more of the stores that are. Right, right. So what kind of results are suppliers seeing? Wow, this is really exciting. So no number I'm going to quote you falls below 7%. Oh, that's so at good. all of retail, 10% okay. incremental lift over the control group. And I think that's really important to note that there's a control and a test group right. so that you can right. measure that incremental lift that mm -hmm. everyone's looking for and has never had with digital campaigns before, the ability to actually measure incrementality. The 8% uh, lift is at Walmart. So for all the campaigns that we've run at Walmart, okay. they can experience an 8% lift in sales. Uh, with uh, promotions, uh, you're gonna basically cause a lift of about 7%. New product introductions are at 12%. And basically the Halo brand lift is also 7%. So you drive them in to go buy this product, yeah. but that same brand might be nearby on the shelf. It's causing lift for that as well. Okay, so, so the suppliers so far have been happy. Very happy. <laughs> this is uh, a way to really uh, get the shopper involved with almost any promotion you have going on. Strengthen those results or a new product introduction. And, you know, it's so important to make a new product introduction and those promotional dollars create return for us. And right. so, to me, right. this is a way to supercharge both of those activities. Well, return on investment, obviously one of the more important things whenever marketing yes. programs or, you know, when groups get together to go spend money on different things. And the RO. I, because of the real-time sales lift and data and stuff has been has been good for suppliers as well very good they're signing up across all of their retail partners where you've got the data in place you know especially at a daily level like we enjoy in this Walmart community mm -hmm. but it's going on all over the country at many many retailers uh, today with our existing suppliers and we've got suppliers that are saying I want this at every retailer I'm at so Lisa can you give me an example of a supplier and, and kind of how they go down this path Sure. All right, well, the first thing is identifying the situation that you're trying to resolve or uh, enhance. And so coming up with that idea of whether it's a new item launch or promotion, only you know your business. So right. finding that opportunity, uh, determining who and what the message is, is done between you and your ad agency, if you have one. Okay. And so figuring out who you're going to target, what you're going to say, all falls under that banner. And then basically uh, designing what stores these uh, this advertising is going to go to so if you're only in let's take an example it's a new product launch I'm only in 2,000 stores then I only want to advertise to customers within a radius of those stores with oh, whatever wow. that message is that's a huge advantage right and so uh, yeah targeting yeah. and so it takes me back to my old direct response days of now in retail we are not doing shotgun anymore but we're able to target those who create the greatest value for us right. as a retailer and a supplier so then the next step is the the advertising goes out and you now have this fabulous opportunity that I don't think anybody's had before to optimize that promotion while it's going on. Mm. So let's say these 400 stores aren't really performing well, yep. but these other 300 are just selling the product you like crazy. So you shift, shift money over into more. There of the, okay. you go. Okay. So you shift your focus to the stores that are working and maybe those that are not. And that's where RSI comes in to be able to give you that information right. and that data. So okay. optimize real time in the middle of a promotion yeah. is something that is really fun because I can actually create the results that I need wow. by doing that. So if a supplier is interested in this, what's next? Contact me. Okay, that's great. Lisa Bonnet, Retail Solutions. <laughs> there you have it. Thank you so much for joining us today, Lisa. Thank you. Saturday morning meeting for supplier. We'll be right back. Bentonville Commerce, less than one mile from the Walmart home office. You'll love the convenience, amenities, and customized options Bentonville Commerce offers. For more information, call 479-659-1260 today. You know, the biggest challenge of working with Walmart is they really expect everyone on the team to know their language, know their terminology, and know exactly how they do business. So that's where Ethan Walton really comes into play. You know, it's the fastest way to get my team members up to speed. Their business model is suppliers teaching suppliers. So when you come to Ethan Walton, you can count on having very experienced trainers who understand how suppliers work within Walmart, and they take advantage of that and incorporate that into their curriculum. I think our, our MBA is different in several aspects from the traditional online MBA programs. 
we're teaching a methodology that has proven to win. In our school, learn something on Monday and on Tuesday morning, put it in practice. It's real stuff with real action to accelerate careers. I'm here today with Steve Wolf, Customer Vice President of Abbott Nutrition Walmart and also Chair of the Kiss a Pig event coming up March 14th. And we're here to talk about that event and the American Diabetes Association. Let's start by talking about Kiss a Pig. The, the name is always curious, so what's that about? It definitely is. First of all, I'd like to thank you very much for having us here today for the American Diabetes Association. And Kiss a Pig, yes, this is a, a name that uh, obviously raises some eyebrows and, and most everyone here in Northwest Arkansas immediately associates the pig with some something to do with the Razorbacks. And obviously we all love the Razorbacks here in Northwest Arkansas, but um, actually the pig, uh, the kissing of the pig is just a simple way of honoring the pig for being the first source of life-saving insulin for, for diabetics. Ah, okay. That's a fact that I'm sure many people didn't know. I know that it was news to me when I first wondered what Kiss of Pig was about. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Abbott Nutrition has, has had a great partnership with the American Diabetes Association Northwest Arkansas chapter for many years. Can you give us some background uh, on how and why that got started? Well, we, we actually got started uh, back in 2007. Um, this was a simple way of us contributing to the local community and our organization has a charitable platform that uh, ensures that we align our corporate strategy along with our nonprofit strategy. Uh, the American Diabetes Association aligns very well with that. And uh, in 2007, um, I became a, a candidate for the Kiss a Pig event. And Did uh, you get to Kiss a Pig? I actually did with the support <laughs> of my team and the fundraising efforts that we did. Uh, they, they actually put us over the top to raise the most funds and had the fortunate opportunity to kiss the pig that year. <laughs> well, I'm glad you yes. say it's fortunate. Yes. That's great. So, so your company has, has been supporting the organization. I, I can see the alignment uh, makes sense. And, and what's been the impact on your team over, over time as, as you've done that? Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, our team has been actively involved. Um, we have had, as I said, have been involved here for almost a decade. Right. And over that time, we've had a lot of team members who have participated, volunteered, um, either part of the committee. Um, we've actually had uh, five different fundraising candidates in the in the past seven years, four of which that went on to win uh, a lot of the pig event. Kissing. There's <laughs> quite a few pig kissers in our office, but uh, I think it's it's even a, a more important message that goes out to our team is knowing that we are very fortunate for what we we do have, and those who are part of our team, I think, have recognized the importance of being able to give back mm -hmm. and contribute to a charity and help those mm -hmm. uh, who are are in need of our assistance. Mm -hmm. That's great, yeah, and and it, it, the team sort of coming together around that cause obviously has had an impact, uh, just as exhibited by the success uh, in, in in the event. So that's great. That's true. It, it, and as I said, it's 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 not only the team coming together because it has been tremendous in, in team building efforts mm -hmm. um, and rallying everyone behind this, but I think it is also in its own way helped develop some uh, additional benefits that transcend just our volunteering. The leadership skills that our team has been able to benefit from I think has been in incredibly uh, impactful and actually some of our previous winners, fundraising candidate winners that have had the opportunity to kiss the pig, the pig have uh, since moved on to other opportunities in our organization and continue to demonstrate those leadership qualities and have really benefited in their experiences and their involvement here with the local community mm -hmm. uh, in their career life. Sure, sure. Well, and one of the things we talk about on the show is this unique uh, corporate giving environment in Northwest mm -hmm. Arkansas and uh, it's, it's great to see how that all crosses over back and forth. You give to an organization and then it gives back to you and your own career. Yeah, it, it really is. We are really in a very unique situation here in Northwest Arkansas. I, I think most anyone who has lived in any other community recognizes the unique position that we're in. Um, I've had the opportunity throughout my career to live in, in a number of different cities across the country and never before have I been exposed to the type of impact and the caring and the giving that uh, this, this particular community demonstrates and it, we are just very fortunate and very unique to be in this position. Absolutely. So that's actually a great uh, lead to the next question I was going to ask. How can um, small or medium companies get involved in, in, this, uh, in, in helping this mission? 
Well, Jeff, there's, a, there's opportunities that are available to everyone. Um, the best way to get involved in, in our organization, and obviously there's a lot of worthy um, nonprofits throughout Northwest Arkansas that all would benefit from volunteering. But with the American Diabetes Association, the best way to get involved would just be to reach out to the local chapter mm -hmm. uh, here in Northwest Arkansas. The office is located in Bentonville, and I know you'll have the website to direct uh, your viewers. But uh, I, I think from both a sponsorship perspective for companies that want to get involved in, there'll be opportunities for them to participate. At, and at, at various levels? At or? various levels. Um, and Kiss a Pig is one of the three major fun, uh, events that the local chapter puts on each year. Um, in addition to the Kiss a Pig, which is the largest fundraising event, uh, there's also Tour to Cure, which will take place in August, mm -hmm. and also the uh, Health Expo, which will be in November. Mm -hmm. So each one of those events is always going to benefit fit from not only sponsors but also volunteers so if you happen to be a small business or if you happen to be an individual that would like to to reach out and find out more information on how they can make a difference and how they can make an impact please reach out to the local chapter of the American Diabetes Association. Steve thank you very much for joining us today. Our thanks to all of today's guests and happy Valentine's Day. Watch next week and become a smarter supplier. It's our February special, and we'll talk social marketing. You might just see a member of Saatchi and Saatchi X in marketing and Hayden Interactive, if you're lucky. I'm Andy Shook, and from all of us at Saturday Morning Meeting for Suppliers, thanks for watching. I walk in every day and I just take a deep breath and I'm like, I can't believe where it's gone, where it's come to. Blood, sweat, and tears, and then some, everything to build the, the company where it's at. I'm Billy Westbrook, and Scrub Blade is a idea I had. I wondered why don't wiper blades scrub your windshield? If they're going back and forth, why don't they scrub the windshield while they're doing it? You know, I was making barely any money to survive. Um, I was living on an air mattress at a friend's house, completely stripped down to nothing. It's just me. I was like, I'm going to give this 100% and see what happens with it. And that was in 2006. It's 2014 now, and I've never stopped. In the journey of Scrub Blade, we had a huge opportunity to do a, a big test with, with Walmart. And if I would've worked all those eight years and neglected my business credit, I wouldn't have had the biggest opportunity of our journey. Dunn and Bradstreet Credibility is a huge partnership for Scrub Lane. They share the knowledge really well, go through your credit rating with you and explain what this means and what that means. We're um, starting a big test with AutoZone, and I mean, they're the largest automotive retailer in the world. It's gonna take our company to the next level and beyond. What drives me, what keeps me going, is uh, my family. Yeah. My job is to take care of my family and it gives me a lot of pride to know that I can do that. And at the same instance, Dun & Bradstreet Credibility is uh, taking care of me or my entity, Scrub Blade. I mean, it's still a small company, but big in my eyes. We wanna have fun with it. We wanna bring people in along for the journey. You know, life's a journey, get a clearer view. That's what Scrub Blade's uh, tagline is, and it, it means everything. <laughs>